Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope you all have your lunches in front of you. I know normally we would all be sitting around and provide lunch, so it's a little different this time. Uh, my name is Kathleen Krostick. I'm the Partnerships Manager here at Towson University uh, in the Office of Partnerships and Outreach. Um, in today's Lunch and Learn, we will really be focusing on an overview of BTU and some opportunities that you might be able to tap into, uh, whether they be support or resources over the next couple of months. Um, Matt Dorrington is going to be leading the discussion, but before I hand it over to him, I just want to go over a few really quick but important logistics, um, particularly about how you can engage with us today. Um, all, into, all attendees' videos will be off and your mics are muted. However, we definitely want to hear from you. Um, so to do so throughout the session, you can either tap into the chat, you can enter questions in the Q&A, or if you want to ask anything verbally during the question and answer session, you can just hit that little hand raise option at the bottom of your screen. Um, if you do that, then you will be promoted so that you can unmute yourself and speak, but your audio, I'm sorry, your video will still not work. Um, also, I want to let you know that today's session is being recorded and it will be able to be found on the B2 events page by the end of tomorrow. And with that, I will hand it over to Matt. Thank you, Kathleen, and hi, everybody. Um, thank you for uh, joining us today. Um, we never know with the Lunch and Learns what the mix is going to be, especially in a virtual environment. So what I always like to do is give a quick overview of what uh, BTU, the, this, the presidential priority, is. And then I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what we've done during uh, COVID. Um, and what we are projecting going forward. So um, as Kathleen was saying, I know that um, this is not the same with uh, black and gold catering, but we're gonna do our best, okay? All right. Um, so um, since uh, the arrival of President Chassel on campus, uh, she was very aware of that Towson was really a leader in, in the community engagement space, both uh, in greater Baltimore and, and beyond. But that we were kind of all over the place in terms of uh, there were pockets here, pockets here, and a lot of folks not really knowledgeable about uh, the work they were doing, but also the work they may have been doing with some of the same partners. So the idea for B BTU, which stands for Baltimore Towson University, is that to build this framework to support the work taking place between our community and our collaborators. Uh, I won't read this in, in detail uh, because the, the deck is available anytime you want to, uh, to, to do some discovery or some discussion of your work, but we obviously support faculty, staff, and students. We're a front door. We try to identi identify, capture, and determine the scope of collaborations. Um, I think for those of you who have worked with us, you know that we're very responsive and love to uh, get in and start figuring out how we can resource the work, coordinate different resources, but also um, align it for the public good. And if you haven't read the strategic plan for the university, uh, I encourage you to do so because it's really um, exciting to see some of the work that's being pushed forward in terms of community engagement and diversity, equity, and inclusion. So why get involved? Well, if you are doing community engagement, you are doing BTU. You're a part of us. But we want to make sure that we know what you're doing and not as a gatekeeper, but as a connector, not only to just different university leadership, faculty and staff in terms of collaboration, but we also have the BTU Council, which is essentially a bunch of different folks from around the campus that often don't get together to brainstorm solutions to engagement roadblocks. And then also you are then eligible to apply for BTU funding resources. Just some of the activities that occur within our framework is obviously community-based research, educational collaborations, all kinds of outreach events uh, with our, our friends in the civic engagement and social responsibility shop and student affairs or academic affairs rather. Um, we also uh, work with service learning courses and other things as well. We also organize our work at Towson University in terms of community engagement and collaborations with these five impact areas. And you may say that, or they may look like they align with particular colleges, but these activities are taking uh, place across the campus and across all the various colleges and, and the library. So, but this is a good way for us to think about how is it that we can organize uh, the great work being done on campus. So uh, where are we in terms of funding resources? Obviously in the last year, um, some things have been a little different, but I want you to know uh, where we've been in terms of resource uh, funding resources and where we hope to, to get back to as well. 
So one of the unique uh, aspects of the BTU uh, priority is that we have BTU priority investments. And this is, was quite a cultural shift for the campus to uh, really wrap the arms of the university around particular projects and focusing on scaling, sustaining, aligning, and institutionalizing uh, those community engagement projects. And rather they'd be just a semester or something you know, piecemeal, we wanted to really uh, uh, take some time and effort to do something longer to try to move these projects forward in particular ways. We also have a tier of support called Emerging Idea Investments, and this is supported by our friends at uh, Whiting Turner. And this is a one year period focusing on supporting new projects um, and particularly connected to underserved populations. And oftentimes the emerging idea space is where we are able to kind of incubate community engagement projects to, to take that next step. We also have historically ongoing BTU support and these three tiers of enrichment support, national visibility support, and, the, and our big one, transportation, which of course we are not doing at the moment due to the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. But the enrichment support is meant to help folks who may already have some funding, may already have some resources, but there may be a gap. And I, I've shared this story, I'll probably ad nauseum right now, but um, I, I ran a, a National Science Foundation project for, for many years and they don't buy food. If you're doing community engagement work in Baltimore City or elsewhere, if you're not showing up with a deli tray, you're not getting anywhere. So we can buy food, we can do a lot of things, we can fill in the gaps. Uh, this is funding up to, to $2,000. And uh, we've been able, we've had some great successes in every single college in the library, helping folks get projects over the line. Um, this is particularly important for uh, colleagues who are tenure track, um, national visibility support. If you have already uh, uh, utilized your uh, college and department travel uh, funds, you can come to us for more support to get to conferences, which would now of course be virtual conferences. But this is really important as folks are trying to build up their CV to network and to, um, and to, to meet other folks, which hopefully we'll be able to get in person sooner than later. And of course, transportation, which is a really, you, it's really the linchpin of the community engagement work in a lot of ways. How can we get our folks into the community to do, do work and how do we bring our collaborators to campus? And this is one of the real pride points for, for the BTU team in terms of really refining this uh, process of accessing transportation for folks that wanna do community engagement work. And just real quickly, this, this model here is meant to just kind of show that wrap around uh, the, the arms of the university around projects, right? We, Assessment and evaluation is very important to us, particularly when it comes to our, our Carnegie classification as, as the first community engagement uh, campus in the, in the system uh, in Maryland. Uh, marketing and communications, uh, working with our friends in advancement and fundraising and external grants. And we're really attuned to making sure that the community engagement work folks are doing is translating to scholarship and dissemination. And those ideas also must involve community input and partnership development. We really want to make sure the voice of our collaborators is being heard. And that's where the community and civic engagement work really uh, starts to occur. So how to make sure my work is a part of BTU? Go to towson.edu backslash BTU form. And if you have any questions about inputting your project, you can email us at partnerships at towson.edu. This is how we find out where and, and in what capacity you may be working with different folks. Um, you can also contact our database guru, Tess Heron, and we'll put her uh, email in the chat, and she can walk you through the database and, and the great tool that it is to really organize and let us know about the work occurring both on campus and out in the community. Okay, so with that overview in mind, and that was what, about eight minutes? That's not too bad. Okay, so where are we spring 2021? All right, so how do you do community engagement when you can't engage the community. It's been a quandary, right? Um, but, and I, I'm hesitant to say things like innovation and opportunity right now, but at the same time, there are some things that we have learned. And, and a lot of those um, have to do with, you know, obviously video conferencing and, and engagement, but also the, the work that we've been doing, we've been able to continue in particular ways. I would also say that BT, the BTU priority is, is, is a, a maturation point where we, through our application processes, have found a lot of work going on on campus, but we're also starting working with faculty and staff and students to, to generate some more work as well. Um, right, so um, let's see, resources. We wanna talk about what we are able to continue to resource, and then some of the programming that we're gonna be doing this spring and into uh, the fall. 
But before getting into that, I want to kind of share kind of four areas where we're really starting to think about um, and, and have been thinking about there, it's evidence through the projects, but really making sure that these four notions are put forward in, in our, the work that we do. You know, creating connections, building capacity with folks, addressing complex issues like we've been doing with COVID-19, economic inequality and other things as well. And then really making sure that we're, trans, we're, we're working towards transforming lives, making an impact thinking about how Towson University can, can uh, really uh, serve the public for the public good. Um, going back to our impact clusters, we always try to give an update on where we are in terms of particular engagements. And this has been a very interesting, you know, period in, uh, of, of, of th change and what have you during the pandemic. Um, some folks are, have been struggling in terms of being able to do their engagement work, whereas others have been able to see some of these connections thrive even more, despite not being able to be in person. And, and our partners really uh, break down around different sectors and uh, we get a great uh, positive impact report when we seek feedback from our community collaborators, um, education, nonprofit community organizations and, and a number of other areas too. And this is, this is another uh, point of pride for us as well, but just going by the numbers and where we've been over the last few years, you know, uh, the, the larger investments, uh, external partners, tons of hours with BTU staff support uh, and, and the 3,622 K through 12 students impacted as well. I'm really showing the, the experiential learning opportunities that we not only provide for students through community engagement work, but also working with our, our great K through 12 partners. And just quickly to show you some of those, those different support outcomes from the Inside Out Prison Exchange, uh, working with um, the Model UN, the Public Communication Centers, uh, a grant writing valued environment, which is one of our, our great stories for BTU support. Um, teaching environmental awareness down in, in um, the Inner Harbor, support of Ailey Camp and, and forensic work and a number of other areas too. And like I said, I can make this slide deck available and do a deep dive into any of these if anyone's interested. So as far as support goes for spring 2021, one of the um, things that we did do, and this came out of the, the reopen task force and conversations with the Dean and in particular, uh, Dean Lisa Plowfield from the College of Health Professions was how could we start to think about reallocating some resources uh, towards responsiveness to the pandemic. As, the, as a campus, we've been incredibly responsive in terms of, the, of making sure it's a safe space and trying to create opportunities for students, faculty and staff to continue the work. But one of the things that um, our colleague Lori Logan Bennett found in the Career Center with a survey to students was that uh, the massive unemployment that was occurring amongst the TU student population because of the pandemic. And so what we did was put out a call for uh, faculty that if they were able to move their work towards responsiveness to COVID, the pandemic, or we're maybe thinking about new work to do under, under that, um, that we would provide uh, support for them to hire student employees. And this has worked out incredibly well, um, over a dozen different projects that have jumped off and uh, students being employed, but also not, getting a, not just getting a paycheck, but getting a research opportunity as undergraduates and being able to put that on their CV and, and actually support uh, some of the great uh, research being done by our faculty colleagues too. Another thing that we've uh, really, uh, I think everyone's become a bit of an expert with Zoom video conferencing, but we've been able to provide a lot of virtual and technical support, not only for folks on campus, but even uh, uh, working with some of our uh, community collaborators to help them get along and how to move that uh, uh, space forward in terms of video conferencing and, and that kind of support too. We also too, and I know that folks are, you know, people are talking about the fourth quarter, I'm optimistic about the summer, but even with uh, what's occurring now as the rates are going down, we're starting to hear folks talking about some really limited in-person experiential community engagement opportunities, of course, within CDC guidelines. What I would say is if you're thinking about doing something later this spring, summer, even fall, go ahead and contact us now so we can uh, brainstorm with you and think about how we may be able to do it. Um, also, you know, constantly being a connector resource to community groups, but just to let folks know, obviously no transportation support through June 21, and then, uh, but we have been able to provide some virtual conference support for faculty uh, who, you know, have, have been able to, to attend conferences and may have been even expanding that. We also, you know, have learned some things as, as well through uh, webinars and blogs, our cross-campus collaborations. Uh, financial shifts and, and as I was saying, the student employment support, 
uh, one of one of the most fascinating things, and, and maybe we can get into this in the Q and A a bit, but just how much. Uh, the the landscape of smaller uh, black led nonprofits and the telecommunications and other things that folks have, have been, had to do but also thinking that that in terms of maybe some liberating of time and other things as well so just as i was saying some things that we never expected to learn but there are some things that we're going to keep going forward and i i we developed this word cloud uh earlier this year to also show uh these are these are uh keywords from the projects that have come out of the student employment and community engaged research and as you can see from the word cloud here and this of course is a scientific uh data point but you know impact family covid 19 baltimore community these are the spaces that we really want to be in that we want to provide support for too um, just to give you a heads up as well, uh, we will be having a BTU showcase uh, May 6th, um, and that's going to actually highlight uh, the student um, employment support projects. Uh, we can't do our, our usual showcase, which is bringing a ton of people on campus, uh, CQ Arena for a, a, a date of, of learning and connecting, but we are going to try to do something along those lines, and we'll have our BTU awards in the fall as well as some uh, economic inclusion webinars and education sessions that will be coming up later this spring. And some of the, the developing work in terms of investments are uh, so our colleagues Don Morgs and Amina Salah in political science have been doing some great work with uh, minority-led nonprofits, and we've been working with them to try to strengthen that capacity building. Uh, we've been able to really, uh, over the last four years, we have a whole cadre of students now who have have really developed a lot of specialized knowledge and expertise um, in community engagement work. And we wanna harness that and, and increase the number of TU students involved in this work, as well as always uh, expanding our, our, our um, educational co-curricular experiences. What we are anticipating, and, and again, I wanna encourage folks to think about this, is that um, we're not sure what the budget is gonna look like for the next fiscal year, but we do expect that folks are gonna be really uh, um, anxious to re-engage and do some collaborations and do some work out in the community. And we wanna hear from you. We wanna hear how we might be able to resource that one way or the other. And then um, we're also developing uh, in, in partnership with the Office of uh, Institutional and, and Inclusion and Equity um, with Dr. Leah Cox and her staff, uh, really, really exciting stuff with the diversity strategic plan for the university and how community engagement uh, can be a part of that, particularly in a space like Greater Baltimore. Okay, so that's the end of the spiel. Not bad, under 20 minutes. Um, so if anyone has any uh, questions, um, we'll start this process of trying to figure out how to, uh, to answer it with this format, okay? So don't be shy. Yeah, we would love to hear from you right now. I don't think we have anything coming in. Um, so again, there are kind of three different ways that you guys can, can chime in. One, through the Q&A, two, through the chat, and three, if you'd like to speak to us, because we'd love to hear from you, um, you can just raise your hand and I'll be able to promote you so that you can un unmute yourself. Um, and while we, I guess, are waiting, oh, here we go. I'm going to, I apologize if I mispronounce this, but Hasanda, I'm going to allow you to unmute yourself. So if you can just unmute, you can go ahead and, and chime in. Okay, it looks like the mic is unmuted. Maybe uh, their mic is muted? Nope, they're unmuted, but if um, that was an error, I can go on to the next person. Yeah, feel free to put a question in the chat if, if for some reason we're not getting through. Let's see, Liz. Okay, so phase on, I'm going to allow you to talk if you'd like to unmute yourself. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Hi, phase on. Okay. Hey, Matt, it's phase on. Nice to virtually see you. See you, yeah. And, uh, thanks Hope you're well. for, yeah, for putting this together. I have a couple of questions. One is if we had a ongoing uh, project uh, at the beginning of last spring, which was approved by BTU, but then obviously put on hold for the pandemic. Um, are we able to kind of restart that process when things open up, let's say in the fall um, without kind of going all the way back to step one and, and yeah. redoing the application? 
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Just, um, you know, shoot, shoot me or the team an email. And uh, we're, I don't think we're going to do any like formal queuing or anything like that. But that type of email, we, and it's exciting to see because I think folks, as I was saying before, are really you know, chomp at the bit to get back and do some of the community engagement and project work. So just reach out and we'll uh, be able to see what we can do next with it. Okay, yeah, that, that's kind of what I expected, but just wanted to, to confirm. And then the second kind of bigger picture question is, um, I know still, at least within my department, which is psychology, um, I've still, I still kind of have conversations around, or I hear conversations around, not really sure how to engage BTU or how I can incorporate it into my teaching or research. And so if, um, if there's conversations, whether it's us or a colleague that we think, hey, you know what? Like there's, there's actually potential here because it's clearly related to community work or, or a, a, an organization that the university might be connected with. Is there like a, I'm not sure, like I know you, you we can email you directly and, and that's mm -hmm. great, but is there like a liaison or, or almost like a, a person who can walk us through what just an idea might look yeah. like, because I think a lot of people have ideas, but they don't know what that would look like from a right. community engagement perspective. Yeah, no, I think that that's a fantastic question. And it's really uh, timely too, because we've actually been talking with our, our friends in civic engagement and social responsibility and, and um, OIIE as well about, you know, how can we go out and actually talk to folks about what community engagement work entails? What are, what are, what are the methodologies, the ethos, um, some of the different uh, data assessment that can occur. Um, I, of course, as a colleague, would be more than happy to come in and talk, but we're also thinking about, you know, kind of a pool of folks with specialized knowledge in this area that might be able to, to you know, talk to folks as well. And that's been one of the uh, maturations and evolutions of it too. So, um, yeah, there's, there's, as I was saying before, we're, we're, you know, really connectors. So the nice thing about the BTU database is that if you come, like say you wanted to go out and start doing um, some work with a school, with an arts organization, a nonprofit, one, we can see if there is already work taking place there, but then we can also point to folks who may have a, a content expertise in those spaces too and serve as a liaison to put you in touch with them. We, we don't necessarily want for everyone cold calling everyone all the time, but as I was saying before, we're not gatekeepers and we wanna be able to come in. Um, and like I said, I, I, that's something I'd really, really like to see develop even more, um, maybe even with our students that have really develop some quasi expertise and community engagement strategies to be able to talk to other students as well. Yeah, yeah. great, thank you. Hey, great. Uh, we have quite a few questions that came in over the chat. So Matt, I'm gonna go ahead and read the first one off to you. Okay. Would funding from BTU be appropriate for a globally oriented initiative, for example, the new global lecture exchange program? Sure, um, Liz, what I would say is, um, and I think you probably know this from having worked with us closely for years now, uh, but other folks should know it too. If you come to us, um, if we can't figure out a way to resource this, we're gonna help you find a way to resource it. So um, we do have some guidelines in terms of making sure that we're emphasizing the greater Baltimore community, but we also know that, that community engagement and other things uh, have shifted quite a bit in terms of uh, not just the pandemic, but the evolving nature of what community engagement can be regarded as. So I would say that uh, let's look into it and sound, global lecture exchange sounds like something I'd wanna be a part of too. Okay, um, next, as far as the timing for support for research, is funding year round? The funding is available year round um, and, and you'll find, and I think some folks that work with us in the, in the, in the webinar here could attest to it, is that we, can, we like to uh, say that we're very nimble in terms of our responsiveness and timelines uh, and getting back to folks. Um, you know, no one loves uh, last minute uh, uh, asks or anything along that. So I would say try to give us as much lead up time as possible. But the um, transportation, crossing fingers, um, enrichment support, national visibility are available year round. And then we put out calls for uh, emerging ideas and investments uh, throughout the year as well. Once we get back in person, we're able to really start emphasizing that work again. Uh, Matt, this goes back to kind of that connection piece that you were talking about, but um, Catherine Orlando was saying that she's a co-PI of a hopeful Sp Spencer grant, um, yes. and they would like some help connecting with the school district and forming a sure. partnership. Is this Absolutely. something that you can help with? Absolutely. Absolutely. No, and, and Nolly, um, I'm, it doesn't say which uh, 
um, school district by chance, does it? Okay, so Baltimore County, Baltimore City, like whatever, uh, we, ha we have deep, deep, deep connections with uh, the uh, K through 12 uh, sector, predominantly through the work of our, our great folks in the College of Education. But yeah, I think it's really important that if you're gonna uh, move into some type of collaborative work with a school district, knowing the ins and outs, let's talk to you about uh, what the um, uh, IRB process is for certain school districts and, and where activity might already be taking place. Uh, and, and yeah, we'd be more than happy to chat with you about that. And Catherine entered a second comment saying, we already answered it, but that's okay. I think it was okay. the second comment. Um, and who the contact would be for having some of those discussions. Yeah, you can, you, <laughs> yeah, you can uh, use the um, email partnerships at towson.edu or um, you can hit me up um, mdurrington at towson.edu um, and uh, just reach it. Go, if you go to towson.edu uh, slash btu, um, our contact information and some more um, uh, uh, pages that explain what BTU is and, and what we do, uh, you can peruse that resource and, and reach out to us. Okay, the next question is kind of going back to the timing as far as um, funding requests. Do they have, mm -hmm. do applications have deadlines? Uh, yes, and so when we are able to put out those calls for applications, again, there will be deadlines for it, but the uh, enrichment request uh, national visibility, visibility support, and again, transportation are ongoing. So, so they're just, those are very short request forms that you can fill out and send in, or like I said, just, just if something is already ongoing or was approved prior, just, just reach out and, and we'll, uh, we'll work with you to, to, to develop those. Okay, the next question is from our friend Joyce Krasinski and council member. Would you imagine a return to priority investment funding in 21 or 22? Yeah, I think I think the priority pr the priority investment and in emerging idea investments were were really um, um, so important to start moving the community engagement work forward under the BTU priority. So I imagine those will always be a part of what BTU does. I think. Um, we also don't want to, um, just like with our community collaborators, I always uh, say we don't want to promise the moon and the stars. We also don't want to necessarily promise uh, certain things when we need to see what the next fiscal year is going to look like and what types of priorities um, are coming out. But, but Joyce, my, 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 um, I anticipate that we, we will definitely want to return to those and really show the deep investment and support that we can give various projects. The only other question right now is asking about your PowerPoint, Matt. Would you be willing to share that either on the site or we can email it out to folks? Yeah, after? We'll, we'll, uh, we'll, let's go ahead and we have everyone's uh, uh, contact information from the registration. So we can both send it to you directly, but also um, we can throw it up on the Lunch and Learn site. Um, the, the, the BTU slide deck as it is, is constantly uh, evolving and changing, uh, but at the same time, uh, I'd be more than happy to put that in front of folks. Okay, we just got one more in. Um, this is from, I again, apologize if I'm mispronouncing it, from Jenna. Um, I'm a new EMF faculty member and have ideas regarding faculty student collaboration in filming Baltimore nonprofits, but I'm unsure where to get started. Mm -hmm. Are there mentorship opportunities where I could connect with faculty that have worked with BTU in the past? Sure, um, we can definitely do that, uh, Jenna. Um, and also, there's 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 great there's a great tradition in EMF of doing work like this, um, and um, and me particularly, I my, a lot of my work is with a lot of media collaboration um, in Baltimore City. So you could reach out to me for the BTU hat and also for the. Uh, ethnographic film and media collaboration had to. I'd be more than very, very, very active community um, around those uh, issues in, um, in Baltimore. So I'd be happy to, to connect you to some of it. And welcome to campus, by the way. I can't even imagine what it's like being a first year faculty member right now. So we're here to support you. Hey, Matt, that is all that we have had come in so far, so. Well, you know, hey, look, I love people giving uh, folks back time. So, um, you know, we could sit here for the next 30 minutes or we could, I could let you go and just say, reach out to us. Um, let me put my email in the, um, in the uh, chat real quick directly. Okay. There's my email. Um, and like I said, you can also use the partnerships at Towson.edu. Um, I think there is one more hand up. Yeah, we just got another hand raised. So I'm going to Katie. 
Uh, you should be able to unmute now. Hi, uh, thank you. So I had emailed, um, uh, Catherine, I, I'm the one that emailed Tess about the article that I read in the Baltimore Insider about um, amazing rapper in um, Westminster who has a nonprofit for students with music and engineering um, and learning all about that. So I, I just wanted to ask you if I should stay on to speak with you and Matt or at another time or what would work just to kind of learn what we could do and if there's a partnership or, you know, I just thought it was so motivating and great what he's doing and try to find a way to connect with BTU. No, no, and that's, and those are the kind of stories that, you know, we know that folks are out and, and discovering new things and making new collaborations. And, and Katie, the, and this is for everyone too, what we tend to do when, when an idea is germinating or a possible uh, project or collaborations occurring, we like to set up an individual meeting and kind okay. of, in almost like a discovery meeting that you would do for a new venture or something along those lines. And that what that means is the, the entire BTU team will be meeting with you so that we can make sure that everyone's got an eye on what possibilities may exist. So we'll, we, can, uh, we can reach out to you and schedule a time uh, quickly. Okay, perfect, thank you. And that goes for anybody else too. If you just, like Faison was talking about some of the stuff he's doing and, and quite frankly, when, when we are in person, what the Lunch and Learns are, have become over, over the years is a really informal space to make community, to share ideas. And we often, and it moves to a hallway uh, or doorway conversation, usually towards the end of Lunch and Learns, but um, that's kind of different in a virtual environment. So we'd love to do some discovery with you. Awesome, awesome, excited. Thank you. Thank you, Katie. Hey, Matt, it looks like that might be it. Is that it? Okay. Oh, one more. Um, never mind. They changed their mind, I think. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Wait, yeah, no, the, um, that, that's our, our colleague that didn't get to ask that question at the beginning. There we go. I think you're unmuted now, so you should be able to speak. Hmm. Maybe it's something on, on their end. In terms yeah, it might be a tech issue. Yeah. Um, if you, like Matt has said a couple of times, if you want to reach out to us specifically over email, or if there's anything you want to throw into the chat, we'd be happy to, to touch base also after the, mm -hmm. the webinar today. Yeah, and, and uh, whoever, I don't know if that's Hasanda or if that's, first initial last name, I apologize, um, but either or just reach out to me directly. Feel free to e email me right after this if you'd like. Okay, hey, Matt, I think if you wanna wrap it up, we can. Thanks everybody for tuning in. Um, look out for, we just put out a newsletter. Um, but um, in addition to the newsletter and some things that we have coming up, we will uh, make you aware um, of uh, some of our webinars and workshops that we're hoping to develop um, in the spring. And I, I just, I can't wait to see everyone's faces. I was just walking around campus today and it's, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing the buzz back on campus with my colleagues and students and staff too. So thanks for uh, tuning in and, and we'll be in touch.